In this video, I want to take a look at system of equations on the SAT exam. Um, in particular, I want to talk mostly about what it means when you have no solution and what it means when you have an infinite number of solutions. So just in general, um, why don't we just talk about what does it mean for a system of equations to have a solution? Well, let's think about this from a graphical standpoint here. Okay, If, for instance, I were to just graph two lines along the y and x axis, okay, one and two, okay, it would look something like this. A solution would be where those two lines intersect, okay? It's going to be where they have the exact same x and y values. So if a system of equations has a solution means it's where they intersect, well then what do you think it means when we say a system has no solution? Well, if a system has no solution, that means the lines are never going to intersect. So never intersect. And what we want to think about this is think about then most of the time you're going to be dealing with linear systems on this test, meaning straight lines. So what kind of straight lines never intersect? Well, we call those lines parallel. And parallel lines, what we know about them is that they have equal slopes or the same slopes. Okay. Well, so if no solution means that our lines never intersect, then we got to say, okay, well, what do you think infinite solutions means? Infinite solutions. Well, infinite solutions means that they always intersect. And if they're always intersecting, and again, we're talking about a linear system, okay, then they have to be the same line, which means they are the same line. And if they're the same line, well, then they must have the same slopes. Okay, now you'll notice in both these situations, whether it's no solution or whether it's infinite solution, for both of these, we're saying that the slopes of our lines must be the same as long as it's a linear system here. So let's take a look at some of these examples and let's kind of apply this idea here. So take a look at question number one. It says, if the equation above has an infinite number of solutions, what is the value of m? Now, some people get confused with just kind of the way this is uh, written here. So you might want to think of this as like two equations. Like this is like y1 and the right side is going to be y2 here. Okay, so people are used to seeing it like that. Um, but first, you should also make sure to distribute this out here. So that first one would become 2mx plus um, 8m minus 3. And then the second equation, okay, down here, y2, that would be 6x plus 21. Now, if those are our two equations for our linear system here, well, if they have an infinite number of solutions, they must have the same slope. So the slope of the first one here, okay, we said was 6, okay, or the second one, I should say. And the slope of the first one is 2m. It's everything that's right in front of the x value there. So here, in order for those to be the same, we know that m must be 3, because 2 times 3 would give me 6. And that's it. You get to make sure they have the same slope. Okay, let's take a look at question 2 here. So question 2, it says, uh, if the system of equations above has an infinite number of solutions, what's the value of a over b? Now, I'm going to show you two ways to do this, because there is a shortcut method you can use that will save you a ton of time on this test. But I want to show you why this works here. Okay. Say I wanted, again, infinite number of solutions means they have the same slope. So I'm going to put them in slope-intercept form here. So I'm going to rearrange that top equation um, by subtracting the 2x from both sides. So we get 5y is equal to negative 2x plus 60, and then simply just dividing everything by 5. So we get that this y is negative 2 fifths x plus 12. Okay, and then I do the same thing for that second equation here. Okay, so if I have ax plus by is equal to 20. I'm going to start by subtracting off ax. Okay, so we get by is equal to negative ax plus 20. And then I simply just divide by b. Okay, so there's our equation for the second one. y equals negative a over b, x plus 20 over b. So since it has infinite solutions, their slopes must be the same. So the slope of the first one is negative 2 fifths. Slope of the second one here is negative a over b. 
So those must be the same. Negative 2 fifths has to equal negative a over b. And then if I just divide both sides by negative 1, that's going to make both these positive. So a over b is 2 over 5. And there's your answer. So now the shortcut for this is this. If you ever come across uh, a question like this and says infinite solution or no solution for a problem like this and everything's lined up, like the x terms lined up, the y terms lined up, and the uh, numbers are on the other side of the equal sign and the equal signs are lined up, if everything's lined up, you can always do this trick. Um, since their slopes are the same, that means the ratio of the coefficients between the x terms and the y terms also has to be the same. So I could literally just read off here and say 2 is to 5, 2 is to 5 as a is to b as a is to b and you have your answer right off the bat here all right um, let's take a look at number three this is one that a lot of people get confused with uh, it says if the expression ax squared plus 3ax minus 2x squared is equivalent to bx then what is the value of b okay so let's write that out ax squared plus 3ax minus 2x squared is equivalent to bx Okay, so what I want to do on this is I like to balance the equation. Um, and what I mean by that is if I have x squared terms on the left side, I want to make sure I have x squared terms on the right side. Or if I have an x term on the left, I want to make sure I have an x on the right and so forth and so forth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually add this 2x squared over to the other side here. So then I get ax squared plus 3ax equals 2x squared plus bx. Okay, well... Now looking at this, if I have 2x squareds on the right, then I better have 2x squareds also on the left. And the only way I can have 2x squareds on the left is if a right here was equal to 2. So I know that a must be equal to 2. So we get 2x squared plus, and then 3 times 2 would just be 6x equals 2x squared plus bx. Okay, well now we have 2x squared is equal to 2x squared. So then we just have to finish this out then then in order to get the b value, bx must be equal to 6x. So b would have to be 6. And there's our answer. Okay, so just make sure the left and right-hand side are the exact same. They're going to be equal to one another. Okay, number four, we're going to use that shortcut um, that we saw for problem two here. So it says, if the system of equations above has no solution, then what is the value of k? All right. So for this problem here, again, since everything's lined up, our x terms lined up, our y terms lined up, and the numbers are lined up with, along with the equal sign, no solution, again, means that they have the same slope, which means the ratio of their coefficients are equal. So I can literally just say 3 is related to negative 4 as 4 is related to negative k. So I've set up this ratio here, and now I can just cross multiply and solve. So 3 times negative k is negative 3k. 4 times a negative 4 is equal to negative 16. And then just divide by negative 3. And so we get that k is equal to 16 thirds. Choice C. All right, uh, let's go down here to number 5. So number 5, it says, in the system of equations above, a, and C, uh, a b, and c are constants. If the equation has infinitely many solutions, then uh, which of the following must be equal to C? Okay, so here we go. Again, we have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many means that they have to be the exact same line, which again means that their slopes have to be the same. So if I distribute this out, we get that this is 3x plus 3a. And then if I go to the right-hand side there, we get bx plus c. Well, infinitely many, if they have to be the same and they have to have the same slope, then b here must be equal to 3. Because if I have 3x and I have bx, then b has to be 3. Okay. Well, if that's true then, and I write this down, okay, 3x is equal to 3x already. So then in order for them to be the exact same, c would have to be 3a, or choice c there. And that's it. Okay, uh, let's take a look at six then on the right-hand page here. So this one says in the equation above, b is a constant. If the equation has no solution, what's the value of b? Again, no solution means that our lines just have to have the same slope. So if I look at the left-hand side here, the slope of that is just five. Well, if I have a slope of five on the left, then I better have a slope of five on the right. Now the slope on the right is denoted by this letter b here. 
Okay, it's everything in front of the x value. So that means that b must also be 5 in order for those to be the same. And so that's choice D. Okay, number seven, this one gets a little tricky. This doesn't have so much to do with uh, infinite or no solution, um, but just kind of a tricky uh, system question that I want to go through here. And this would be on the non-calculator part of the test. It says, given the system of equations above, what is the value of 35x plus 14y? Now, you might get a problem where it says something weird like this. 35x plus 14y, that just sounds really, really weird here. So what I suggest doing is factoring that out, uh, factoring something out here. Well, 35x and 14y, I can factor out a 7, and then I can get 5x plus 2y, okay, when you factor out that GCF of 7 here. Well, if that's the case, you want to look to try to force this to happen. Can I get 5x plus 2y by doing something to these two equations up here? Well, I'll say, wait, 5x, I can get 5x simply by adding together 3x and 2x. So that's what I would do here. I just add these together. So 3x plus 2x is 5x. Negative 4y plus 6y would that just be a positive 2y. And then 3 plus 5 is just 8. Oh, 5x plus 2y, well, here is 5x plus 2y. 5x plus 2y is 8. So we can just substitute this in for 8. So we're left with 8 times 7, which is 56. And that's why this is in the non-calculator part of the SAT because you can force something like that to happen. Okay, same thing, you might see it ask like, what's 10x plus 10y or 5x plus 5y? Okay, usually you can force that to happen by either adding or subtracting your two equations together. So just be aware of that. Um, number eight, just wanna make sure that you're okay and know how to solve a system normally. Okay, it says, given the system of equations above, what's the value of x minus y? Uh, very simple for this one. Um, you're just gonna solve this. I break and there's a bunch of ways, but I would recommend using the elimination method. So I see that uh, we have a positive y here and a negative 2y on top. So I'm going to eliminate the y values simply just by multiplying this bottom equation by 2. So the top equation will stay 4x minus 2y is 8. But if I distribute this 2 to the bottom here, that's going to become 6x plus 2y equals 2. And now I'm just going to add these together. So 4x plus 6x is 10x negative 2y plus 2y gets eliminated. Okay, that's why we call this elimination method. Bring down the equal sign, 8 plus 2 is going to be 10. And so we simply just divide by 10, and we get that x is 1. So there's my x value. Now I can just take that and put that back into either equation to get the y value. So I'm going to put into that second equation. Um, we get 3 times 1 plus y is equal to 1. 3 plus y is equal to 1. Subtract off the 3 from both sides and we get that y is negative two. So what's the value of x minus y? Well, that's one minus negative two, and minus a negative becomes a positive. One plus two is three. And there you go. So that system of equations, which is one of the most heavily tested topics on the test. Uh, if you do have more questions on this, or there's anything else you would like to see, feel free to leave a comment below.